Nigeria will realize it sooner or later. But we are 8 million and we have a territory. There's a law, there's a history. Nobody can ignore that. Those who ignore it, uh, they, they ignore it at their own peril. Because it's only going to grow. It's only going to grow. Hello, Mr. Ande. Hey, Valley, how? Fine. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. You... So I called. I called last night. I've been trying to call the whole time. It's not been that lucky. Yeah. Um, I saw last night. I was sleeping, and then when I got, I went to work. So I'm, I just came back. Okay. So um, I called because we have a little <laughs> window, right? Mm -hmm. That we need to take advantage of otherwise we'll really regret it. Mm -hmm. So um uh, there's a congress a Republican congressman in New York. So he just put a resolution in Congress resolution seven one eight. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm going to send you the link. Okay. Uh basically condemning what Cameron is doing. In fact what he was trying to he seems to be interested in doing was to complain against the fact that they arrested and locked that guy who was a professor in his district. Mm -hmm. So but we that, need to be able to pile in through that. that but, then part, but then find out that Cameroon does that to almost everybody, right? Yes, but but like a congressperson, he's focused on his constituency, right? Uh huh. And it looked like his constituency, his students in the university in his district, freaked out uh -huh. after their professor was locked up. Mm -hmm. And so now that he has passed that resolution, it is our only, what I can say, our first chance to start building, um, how you call it. Um, uh, evidence, you know, so the okay, solution part it is in Congress now. That's why I'm calling everybody. We need to call every grandma, every grandpa, every sister, everybody we know. Our children, whether they are one year old or 20 years old, everybody needs to call their Congress person and say, Hey, we need you. My name, because normally the way Congress staff work is when you call, they try to find out if you are from the district. Yeah, right? they, yeah. And if you are from the district, they record it down. And mm -hmm. so the way you can make it easy for them to record it is to say, oh, my name is this and that person. I reside in this and that address. I am your constituent. So you already do that part of the job for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And, then, um, and then the next part is, hey, I wanted to support resolution. It's called House um, uh, of Representative Resolution 718. Okay. So I, I, I have not slept for almost five days now, I'm just trying to get a little bit of sleep. When I wake up, I'm hoping that I can make a small note that we can send around so people, um, uh, so when the next, you just, we'll just send the note around and then just call people to follow up. Okay. Basically, we need to do phone banking. So um, uh, it would be nice if you can get hold of Rogers, if you have time. Mm -hmm. We need, and we it, it's also going to be more impactful if we do it in a coordinated manner, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of people just calling, we can say, okay, for the whole of next week, right, from Monday to Friday, we want everybody to contact con the Congress person. So what, what does the res resolution read? It condemns Cameroon, basically. The House of uh, Representatives condemns Cameroon and hold Cameroon accountable for the violations of human rights. It, it, it doesn't have a very strong wording, but that it is Congress, it's a big deal. Yes, yes, right? yes. And, and for example, if we can convince somebody like Kit Ellison to co-sponsor the resolution right now, mm -hmm. that will make it, then they can even push to make it even stronger, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if they want to bet. Bottom line is that if there's a, a document that Congress um, uh, approved, a resolution that Congress approved condemning Cameroon, then we don't, when we want to push Congress the next time to give sanction, we don't need to explain. We just need to say, listen, you already know how bad these people are based on already this resolution X that you passed. They have escalated. Please, you need to prove that you're serious about what you're standing for. And the other thing is that Democrats might take over Congress next November, right? Mm -hmm. So it will be to our advantage if right now we start laying the groundwork where we can say to Democrats, listen, when Republicans were here, they could do this for us. How about you who's supposed to care about these things more? Right? Uh, Democrats I, have never, never been very helpful to Africa, though. 
Well, they are the people who freed South Africa, though. That's just a plain fact. There's no way around it. Without them, South Africa will probably still be in apartheid right now. We'll probably still be camp running in campuses, complaining and fighting through campuses. But the Congress that passed the resolution that break down apartheid was a Democrat majority Congress. Yeah, but the French were not there. Democrats are in love with the French. When the French show up, they're going to they're going to speak French to them. The, the French are the biggest uh, force that supported apartheid to survive with nuclear weapons. Right, the people who gave them the one weapon that made up a that thing that he can survive, nuclear weapons, were the French. The thing is that the French have a lobbying in the United States that is very strong as long as you don't push hard enough. If you push hard enough, most of the lobbying in, in the United States is done undercover, right? It's, they don't say, okay, we're pushing for French interest. They say, well, you know, we're just helping these poor African people, you know, they are poor, please just help them without making the connection that they're helping just the dictators. Everybody, like, you know, somebody like Thomas Ankara was refused funding, right? So um, I understand what you're saying. The French have an interest and they are playing up their interest here. We also have an interest and we need to play our own interest too. Now we have the moral upper ground and we have this little window here. We need to be able to force and get something and get this resolution to pass. If we can do this, it would be a big win for us. A really big, big win. Okay. I'll call Regis and bring it to his attention. Let's uh, let's push it and call our congressman. I when Sisiko came I po I opposed him. I said, I don't want anybody to introduce my leader to me. But guess what? That guy is actually a very, very good performer. Yeah. He's very smooth, he's very smart, he's very composed. He he he's built a lot of that's why the public is very threatened by him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and the, I I don't know. Before this resolution, I saw an article on VOA that they have been handed over. No, I think that is. I don't. I don't think so, Edwin. Uh, okay, okay. I think look at it this way: VOA, right, has access to U.S. government sources. You understand? No, VOA just actually VOA just published. I've I've seen VOA publish. I think v, I've seen VOA publish. Bloomberg's report. The first report on that thing was written by by Reuters. Is it Reuters or Bloom? By Reuters. VOA just took that same thing and reported it. So so no, they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying what I'm saying is that the part of the State Department that sponsors and funds VOA would make it unacceptable for them to publish something that is not based on facts. No, I, the, my brother, don't go with that. Oh, don't don't don't. Let me say something here. You know tennis, my friend, right? Uh huh. He used to say things that, you know, if you know how naive I've been that before I come to where I am now, you, you'll be shocked. I used, to, I used to think that anything that you hear on CBS or NBC or on the news is news. It's, it's later that I learned. In fact, it became very glaringly clear during the Ivorian thing that this is all corporate management. Look, La Republic and, La, La Republic and Nigeria got into a situation where Nigeria is telling La Republic that you create this situation. And, and I think like Nigeria was coming under pressure, and Nigeria said, you should say this and that, and then you take this. And La Republic come and say, the people are with us. So that it takes the pressure of Nigeria. Those people, are, I don't believe those people are in Cameroon. They were, La Republic would have shown it. Why, why would Nigeria be so kind to us? Because they love us? No, that, no Nigeria has issues. They are on internal issues with the whole thing. I don't understand that part. What no, do okay. Understand? Nigeria internationally cannot carry people. First of all, most of those people, some of them are Nigerians, some of them are permanent residents, some of them are American citizens, I understand. Nigeria cannot bond them and send them to Nigeria, to the Republic against okay. international law. Mr. Ambe, please. That's why me and you need to kind of look at the thing. The question we need to ask, has this kind of thing happened before? The answer is yes. It has happened before. The CIA and the the... Uh, uh, Mossad went to Kenya and grabbed Abdullah Ojalan and gave him to the Kenyans, to the Turkish. Everybody yeah, in the world. Let me tell you that. Wait, 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 wait. This is somebody. Everybody in the world said, "Ah, this cannot be done." He's in, been sitting in jail in Turkey now for years. Like you, you, you need to convince me a certain interest that Nigeria has, not not moral interest, political interest, to protect us. Otherwise. Nigeria, all the money they are receiving from the United States in their so-called Boko Haram 
fight, which they could, the, Niger, the, the U.S. Gov, um, uh, um, uh, strategic people thought that Nigeria does not have the moral capacity to fight it because of the dominance of the Nordists in Nigeria, and they brought Cameroon to do the job so that politicians in Nigeria can pretend that they're not responsible for it. I see strategic interest in that calculation that, from that calculation, this is a small African thing that should not disrupt that process. Don't you agree with that? Just think like a strategist. Don't think like you are one of us. Just think like you are a strategist. You are sitting in the State Department, and right now the, um, uh, the story of Islamic fundamentalism is your political cut. Every time you put it on the table, Democrats lose. Whether it's elections, no matter how wrong you are, you just put it on the table. So the terrorists are coming to get you. Democrats lost the elections. If that's your political cut, and one of the most popular part of it is playing out in Africa, the dark continent, the place where everybody is known to be dying or some, it just, you don't need too much strategic explanation to conjure up images in people's minds about Africa. Because for years, a certain image has already been painted. You just build on top of that image as a strategist. And then Boko Haram fits that picture very well, right? And then now, you realize tactically that, you know what, you need the oil from Nigeria. Pijot is in Nigeria. It's one of the biggest um, uh, uh, French investments in the world. Total has a lot of investments in Nigeria. Total is not even, Total, Total is partially owned by the French government. I mean, we're not talking about, this is not U.S. government supporting U.S. companies. This is about a French government property. Right. Yeah, what has, that, what has that got to do with our struggle? You're saying what that, that... What that has to do with our struggle is that right now, in the context of who has political power to impose their will in Nigeria, the French has more political power to impose their will in Nigeria than we have. We, what we have in Nigeria is moral authority that Nigerians can feel like they morally should support us, which that in politics, it only goes so far, takes you so far in my race. After a certain time... So Nigeria is another banana republic to be controlled by, by some Western power yeah, because they not, have a big plan. No, not banana republic. Look, only banana republic. Republic. Listen now, what you're saying is that Nigeria is some banana republic where the French have so much control, they'll come and tell them what to do. Nigeria should be Mr. bigger than that. Nigeria should be Mr. better than that. Mr. Ambe, in the United States here, Exxon Mobil is making State Department to go out and defend things that are ridiculous, Right. It's only every once in a while. No, except, no, okay, that, let, let, let's, let's put it. The, the Peugeot and the French ownership is not, it's not, the Peugeot is not owned by Nigerians. It's just a, it's, it's a foreign company there making money and making a profit from Nigerians. Chevron or Exxon Mobil is an American company. Yes, America will protect their businesses around the world. Let me see, see the difference, you know, see the difference. Exxon is owned by some individuals. Some of them are not Americans. Right, the stocks of Exxon, some of them are owned by people from all over the world. But because its origin and its roots in political uh, uh, places here, right, whether it is ALEC or all these co co um, uh, lobbying companies that can shut down Congress, Exxon pays a lot of the bills there. No, right? okay. So I just, think just in Nigeria, it, it's employing Nigerians, there are Nigerian politicians that get paid by Pijot in their thousands. So it's not. This is not, you know, political strategy where political strategy sit on the table. These are things that have people directly involved that have an interest, right? Total. Well, okay, right? let me okay, let me say this. Uh, uh -huh. When we talk of banana republics, what we're talking of is the Monte going down to South America become the main economic thing there and then and then controls the politics. That's what you're saying. Pigeon is doing to Nigeria. So Nigeria. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is that Pijo controls a big part of the political class in Nigeria and total just the same way ExxonMobil does lobbying here. They have money, they pay politicians' careers, they make and break politicians, they employ a lot of Nigerians whose interest is at stake to defend that company, they have a lot of politicians in uh, so France. Total, in, when I pass, so Total's interest has become Nigerians' uh, strategic interest in the region. Look, if you say that, if you look at it, let me say this. If you say that Nigeria uh, does not want to uh, help Ambazonia because uh, Biafra, because it kind of sees a similarity 
between a wrong similarity between Ambazonia and the Biafra movement. I would start saying Nigeria is thinking of, of, of its own interest, even though it's wrong, even though the, the, the comparisons are really wrong. But, but you say that Nigeria, because Peugeot and the French, I know that, look, at, let me say, I know that the Nigerians carry French water all the time. I've read, I've seen, obviously they went and kicked out Bagbo in Ivory Coast. It was Nigeria. When you talk of ECOWAS, it was, it's Nigeria. So, so I know that they do that. But is that correct? No, no, Mr. Ambe, we're not talking about correct. We're talking about me and you being cold in our heads, right? There's a certain level that me and you have reached now that we have to be cold calculating in terms of the geopolitical movement. No, I we do. don't have to. I do. Let, me, let me say this, uh, and, uh -huh. and, and, and this is in response to that. Uh -huh. And this is, let me say, look, Nigeria has gone silent because we've made them, we've put them in that situation. So if they don't think that we're important, we'll let them know that we're important. And just give it time, the politics in Nigeria will become this politi the politics of, of, of Ambazonia. Because we can divide that country. Because they are, they are, they are, they are questions of legality, they are questions of moral, morality. Are you going to, you know, you know that the public right now crosses the border and chase people. Doesn't, is, Nigeria another, is Nigeria a country again? So, so, Mr. Ambe, Mr. Ambe, do you really think that the Republic can do that if Nigeria was determined to not let that happen? No, but they're letting it happen. That's, 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 what, banana, that's, right. what, banana, that's what banana republics do. Well, that is you true. Are, so it's a country that doesn't have its own moral fiber and moral standing by which it makes decisions of right and wrong. Decisions are made through patronage, they're made through bribery, they're made through some interest that is not the interest of the nation. That's what I'm I trying to say. I, I agree what you're saying. What I'm trying to say is that there is a spectrum, right? And that spectrum, the most free and liberated countries like the United States are on one end of that spectrum, but they are not totally off the spectrum. That's no, why no, the no, Russians no. are able to influence stuff here and all kinds of... Okay, but let, me say this, let, me, let me say this here. Uh -huh. American government uh -huh. supporting Exxon around the world, uh -huh. be it that those shares are owned by, I mean, all, all companies these days are global companies, but, but, but ExxonMobil had been a company for uh, an American company when, the, when it wasn't globalized. So, so I think, I think there's, still a, there's, still, there's still something that countries can claim that is our own and we we'll defend it, okay? And there's still, so, so, so I, I don't want us to, to make the world become so milky that, oh, nothing is important to anybody anymore unless it's... Uh, no. Nigeria is a country that ought to be a very important country that has its own foreign policy. And, and it was this foreign policy and, and the importance of Nigeria that the French were afraid of, and that's why they supported to break up that country. If Nigeria does not recognize that, I say want to go and carry French water then, I tell you what, the Nigerian people are very proud, they're very industrious, but they've always had a government that's underperforming, a government that always feels inferior to white people, a, a government whose who's citizens can actually create PGO. PGO is a very inferior car. Have you seen PGO anywhere else in the world other than running around in banana republics in African colonial empires? You know, and is that what Nigeria is proud of? Is that what no, Nigerians are proud I, I to guess, drive? I, I, I guess the point I was trying to make was not how good PGO is. I was trying to point out that it has access to power in Nigeria. That's I know, I know, I know. And that's why I bring the term banana republics because American banana companies go and take a South American country, control their politicians, control their work, control the, the place. And so, it, and so it, that it, country's it, national interest becomes the national interest of Del Monte and Del Monte can change governments and decide how the government thinks. I it, agree. It, I guess the, the reason I didn't want to completely accept it is because you, we cannot compare the scale of what they are doing in Nigeria to what they are doing in Cameroon, right? We cannot compare those two. Um, uh, beyond the colonial history, they have a lot of influence in Nigeria, but they don't have that kind of the kind of dominant and 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 racist control in Nigeria like they have in Cameroon. That's why I kind of was slow to accept the banana republic narrative. In Nigeria, people still have elections. They the way they dominate and control in Nigeria is by bribing people left and right and giving them shares in total business. You know, you have local Nigerian oil companies that have stocks in, in total business. You have 
big Nigerian business where have investment in the French stock exchange, which some of it is used like bribe, you know, to... Well, to, to I agree, but we have to believe that Nigeria is better than that, and, is, is, and we need to, to, to make them know that they are better than that, because you know what, in the final analysis, if, if all Nigerians want to be is, is the... Look, until Africa really stands on its own and starts creating its own PGO, they will always be looked at as, as, as second class. Or to be able to also use our own resources, they will always try to keep us down and, 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 and bribe the smartest of us, kill them, exile them, so that they, we need to challenge Nigeria. And I think this ambassadorial thing is challenging them. That's why for three weeks now, it's going to be a month, they cannot come out and speak clearly about what they're doing because they are ashamed of it. They are ashamed of you're, it. You're right. You're right that they are ashamed of it. But the question is, where is the skill, right? Where is the skill? For example, when, when, when people left the... When, when, Special forces left there and went and kidnapped Odullah Jalan from Nairobi. The United States government said, we don't, we don't know what's going on. They are ashamed of it. But the fact of the matter is, where is the politics? He's sitting in jail in Turkey. That's the fact of the matter. The politicians in Turkey who needed that have gotten what they wanted. That's the, that's the matter. Our public right now, if me and you do not act very well, our public is starting to get to this posture, especially people at home. That well is over, right? No, I don't think people are feeling that. No, I, I talked to home, and boy, my goodness, you know, I just talked to somebody in Bamenda. He said that the public is bracing in Bamenda because if you go just simply a checkpoint, they're all suited up in 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 uh, in, 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 in war gear just to just to check traffic, and then they put sandbags. That because they are fe they are scared right now. I think we have them where they need to be. They are invaders. They need to be scared of the country they invaded, and all of that is coming from exactly. the ground. They shot six people in Manfe last week. Who? The, the French Cameroon troops. Yeah, they, they, they always, I mean, they've always shot people and they go and shoot mostly weak people, mostly, mostly the innocent, mostly the, okay. the okay. you know. But the, point, the point of that is to say that we are losing life, something that we cannot recover. So it's true that they are panicking, but they are using the only tool they have, which is power. And we have, we have moral... And we have little opportunities like this one that is showing up. If no. we do not exploit those two to the maximum, then we are not being strategic. No, I, oh no, no. Listen, let me say this. Uh, I think the one that you said, no, I, I am hundred percent. We're going to promote that. Mm -hmm. We're going to promote that. But I think the conversation we're having is separate from that. But okay. let me say this: that I think, if you look, if you look at what the public is doing with the French, because it is the media that is carrying this thing and they're all lies. Because if those people were there, they would have paraded them, they would have shown them, because it is by showing that, if they're trying to break our will, there's nothing that does that better than saying, this guy is so-called Seseko, we have him in chains now. Let it, until they show that, it is fake news. It is fake news. If they had them, they would show. They're not showing it because they don't have them. But I think Nigeria is telling them what to do because they went in. Let me say this though. They went in there. They, 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 my understanding, look at it, one of the things that you and I have to agree is that uh, we don't know what the truth is. And we don't know what the truth is because these people cannot come out and speak the truth and they cannot speak the truth because they're embarrassed by what, what is going on. That is, that is true only to a certain extent. I don't imagine that Pobia gets embarrassed. I just believe that he... No, they went, they went across, no let, let, me say, let me say this. Uh, Paul Bia is in power because he's allowed by the international community to be in power. By the French. No, the French. No, well, I don't know that he's only afraid of the French. He, uh, uh, when Trump, Trump, Trump did not invite him to his thing, that was a big blow to him. And, uh, you know, uh, the French alone cannot really... If, if all he has is the French, then, you know, then the French have always had him. The French made him. But I can tell you that... That... They pretend to be a government, and the only reason they pretend to be a government actually get away with it is because the rest of the world tolerates it. If it gets to a point where they cannot tolerate it, they will be out because even the French depends on Washington's uh, Washington's opinion. The, in fact, all, of, all of Europeans, the whole Europe depends on what America thinks, and when America doesn't think their way, they say, well, apartheid, uh, apartheid fail when, when America has made the choice that apartheid is going to fail. That is true. That is so true. But that the question then becomes right now, right now, right, right, right now. The kid, the, I think, I think the only reason that they have not shown because they, for somebody to be able to kidnap your leaders and play the the so-called um, uh, if 
um, uh, uh, conversation. It's a tacti tactical blow to you. Because now, if they show us physical, with all, they, all what we have is moral argument. We don't have any way to fight back this moral argument. Then um, uh, all our human rights organizations that have been complaining before, they'll get evidence. Right now, we're in this situation where human rights organizations, because of their position, they cannot rely on rumors. They, they have to, to, to tie on facts, right? They don't have any facts. So the human rights organizations, their hands are tight. They can't say free this person when they don't have evidence that you have the person. But the politicians, are, they are getting it both ways. On the one hand, they are not taking the heat from human rights organizations. On the other hand, we are hamstrung. They have proven to our people that they can stop us when they want. No, they and haven't been able to do that. Let me, let me say this, uh, Bali. Uh -huh. Bali. Yeah. It's been three weeks. There's only one thing that we know, that these people were captured by people, by, by, by my, I, I, don't, I don't know who, but the story goes that La Republic paid money to some lower agents to go kidnap these people and, and give it to them and give them to them so that they can take across the border before anybody knows but that, that did not work as well. So the international community got alerted, Nigerian government got alerted, everybody now knows. And so, and so that's all that we really know. What else is going on is something which, which is either illegal or embarrassing or immoral, or, but there's something which is so, so, so not correct that is keeping these people silent. But for me, uh, the thing is that uh, that is or something that is strategically well done. You take them out of the battlefield, but you also don't take the moral heat from no, taking them out yeah. of the battlefield without being able to try them. Let me, let me ask you see that part. Well, no, you know, some people have said that they, they may have killed them, and and and, that, and that's what let's, let's, let's let not go let's, let's not go down that route. Let's go the route of you you get a political win. Mm -hmm. These people are not out there talking and making you shake on your pants. You have won that battle. Second, you okay. don't get the moral heat that comes from human rights organizations, which is the only thing that our people have. No, no. no. Let me thing. say, I think, I, think, I think you're making too, too much of a deal about human Just by saying that we have it, that's enough for, for human rights organizations to, to do what they want to do. But let, um, uh, for human rights organizations to do what they want to do. Uh, there's a point I wanted to make. I just, just slipped off my mind. What was the other thing that you said? I no, no, okay, here, here, I got it, I got it. Here it is. La Republique, the just the fact that they went and captured these people has, one, given more win and more mileage to our struggle than, than if they did not even attempt it. So every time they've done this, they've only escalated our situation because people, and the more people ask questions, I'm waiting for the day that they actually take those people into a court, a real court, and let people exactly win. exactly what they're avoiding. Don't you see that? But it doesn't help them. It doesn't help them because you know what? They are getting our own story, and the story they'll be getting is ours. They don't have, and the story is that these were people who were supposed to be independent, and somehow they played the game and gave them to a French colonial state, and here is what the French are doing to them. It is wrong. That is, that, that, that's the argument that's out there, and they've lost it. And they've lost it not only, not only by just that theoretical argument, but by the way they've treated us, uh, People are protesting with, 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 uh, with leaves peacefully. You bring a helicopter gunship, you bring troops, and the response is violence, violence, violence. Right now, there are a lot of war crimes committed in, in, in Ambazonia. They go and burn down villages, burn down old, uh, uh, grandmothers and the sick in those, in those, in those villages. Those are, those, are, those are war crimes. I don't think that they're winning this. I don't think that, I, if anything else, I think they are like, my goodness, and the world is like, okay, how much of this will let go? They know that. And Nigeria actually does have a civil society that is looking at it and say this is wrong. So, so, so far, unless you want to really say they are a banana republic that they don't care what their own citizens think, but Nigeria is better than that. We know Nigeria is not performing as much as it should, but they are better than the banana republic, and there's a civil society there, and there are elections coming, and there are fair, free and fair elections. And I know... I know that this our issue is going to be part of it. If and if if the Nigerian civil society is already involved, but we will make it become part of that too. So, so I don't think it's strategic for them to say no. They are hiding because they've been caught. Like like Shiruma used to lie, they've been caught red-handed. I think the question now to Nigeria is 
how do you who started this thing illegally handle it? Because we are under pressure and the public say, okay, we're going to go out and say, and say we have them. And, 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 and maybe that will take the pressure off. And, and it, it has, because our, uh, last week, our people were protesting in front of our Nigerian embassies. I don't see any of that going on anymore right now. I don't know. That's what I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, these are people. Look no, at. No, no, no. I think, I think, I think maybe, maybe I'm, I'm getting a little too cynical. Um, uh, uh, I, I think from the bigger chess game, our people are off the screen. That no, means if, that? If, if it, so no, right now, if people, whether if you're a fighter in Manfi or in Bamenda, you know that the physical is off the battlefield. You know that. Yes. And 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 no matter what you do now, you are you are constrained because you don't know if they're gonna get a breakthrough next to where you are. No, they're, right. they're not constrained because there's, a, there's already another leadership. One of the things that people should never forget is that uh, Seseko is not giving anything to the Ambazonian people. It's the Ambazonian people who are giving him their support to be their leader. So when you take Seseko out, you have taken nothing out. You have taken nothing from them because Seseko could be replaced and they just need somebody who is effective. Tassan was one at one point. Then Seseko came in. And we elevated the whole thing, and our people were happy because one of the things that these people did was take our government away. So our people still need a, co a good coordinator, and anybody who can do that job will, go will, 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 will pass muster for, for our people. So they call, did it better than some people who have come before him, and we just they can just replace him with another person. They just need to be able to provide them that coordination that they need. And they, so Seseko did not come. Seseko is not. Uh, some field marshal or, or some Charles de Gaulle to, to say this country depends on me. No. We made him to be who he is. So if they take him away, they are not taking anything, they're not really taking anything material from us because we'll make another person. And I think that Sissoko will say the same thing. If they take me, make sure the struggle continues. I agree. We'll be fine, pal. We'll be fine. It is they who are. It is they, is, so, so, it is so they who are silent. We are not silent. And the person who is who is beginning to hide. And be, did you have you seen the way Chiroma talks these days? When he went to that French, that uh, French vencard, they call it. If you saw the way he was, I think they paid that that, that TV station to to make that fake interview so that he, he comes and says some of the so he comes and start introducing what what Nigeria have told them to do, you know. And then and then the last Mr. news conference he went there he gave like Mr. thirty seconds, yeah. Mister Ambe, yeah. French African policy is not is the first rail of French politics, so it cannot be surprising to you. That Franz Venkat sees it like a French national interest. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. So, um, because right now, um, France is seriously worried about, you know, there's this new crop of people who kind of are kind of a little irritated by the French that they don't seem to be able to control, especially a country like Ghana, where France doesn't have much interest there right now. They have been trying to, but they don't have that it's not Nigeria, right? For a long time, Ghana was not on the radar. Now you have Ghana, and you have this guy in Ghana seems to be have a touch of Pan-Africanism that the French don't feel comfortable with. So, I... No, they should be very worried well about Ambazonia, because Ambazonia is, is, is speaking a language that the whole world understands, and they're speaking it very clear about who the French are and what they're doing in Africa. You know, for the longest time, when you control French people, that is a dying language. It's okay because when things happen there, it doesn't really penetrate through the progressive world. Uh, are we, we're speaking, we're speaking, we're speaking uh, in the language of the world, and we are exposing France in a way that France has never been exposed before. And we're doing it as well. We're not waiting for CNN and and and, and the BBC to go and, and and tell our story like they used to do in Ivory Coast. We we brought the story to the world to the face of the world and we did it live. So so La Republic in terms of the messaging, they're on the defensive. They're on the defensive. That's why that's why you see them silent. 
they go out and they call us terrorists and Siseko come out and come and define who a terrorist is and, and it is not Siseko, it's Paul Bia. So uh, just, just, just take note, I'm glad that you're taking note about, about Ghana, take note that we are doing the same thing. And all these countries speaking in English and that's, that's, that's the world that, that changes the world. The French, the Francophone world doesn't change the world. They don't, they, they, they don't count. They just want to maintain their colonization and maintain their dictators and maintain their poverty. So you're right, there are two levels to that. So there's that level that you just mentioned. And then there's the level of people shifting interest around by buying politicians and paying for their elections and and giving business people shares in companies and, and all of that. And that and that money layer is the layer that really counts in terms of when decisions are being made. Yeah, no, or, I know that. Mm -hmm. that, or, that. Mm -hmm. and but, so, you, you start, but you start you start punching at that by start giving that whole thing a bad name. You know what I'm saying? When you start that giving that whole interest a bad name, then people start looking at it like, you know what, this is not shiny gold anymore, you know, because, because you know, I can't be caught <laughs> having shares with you because, or, 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 or I can't be caught in bed with you. If you notice the French, have you been reading Ellie Smith's uh, 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 tweets? No. If you notice, know, it sends out tweets that are important and there are French diplomats who respond. And the French diplomats cannot, they know their opinion cannot stand on its own in Africa or anywhere in the world. So what they do is they say, oh, our position is just the same as that of the UN and UK. Why can't you come out as France and say, no, this is what we think? Because they know that they are colonizers, they are part of the corrupting and, 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 and immoral force in Africa. That's why they can't, that's why they can't speak clearly. So they always have, no, 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 yeah, our position is like that of the UN and, 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 and that of the, the UK. And then when they talked about, did you read what, they, somebody said that the French have given uh, heat, heat detecting drones to bring to Ambazonia. The, the French diplomats came and said, no, 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 that, that, that was given, our cooperation agreement with the Republic doesn't involve that. That drone was given by, by, the, by the Americans. You see, they want to bring, Amer they either want to make the bad people include somebody else or good people include, include them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it has always worked like that, hasn't it? Yeah. They, because, what, because, because after that, when they come back here, they say the Western interests, that's the, how they explain it in Washington. Yeah. It's, so... Yeah. So, so my brother, the, 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 the point is that uh, mm -hmm. we are, we are, we, you know, they, the Republic and the French side, they could ignore us and it'll be okay. I think they tried that, it failed big time. Before they noticed, all our people were gone. Now they're chasing them with guns and shooting them to see if they can bring them back. But uh, guns don't shoot ideas and those ideas are planted now. So most of the people fighting on the ground are really not coordinated and they were kids. Can you imagine when adults actually come down, come, come and be part of that and it's coordinated, you know what will happen? And I can tell you another thing. Nigeria cannot prevent uh, Ambazonians either from going there as refugees or going there as people who want to fight the, the evil that is in their home. You know what I'm saying? And if Nigeria wants to have that evil thrive next door, that's the price they will pay. They'll pay a price for allowing col colonies around there. And you know why Ghana remains a very important country in Africa? Only Ghana alone came out and said the independence of Nigeria is only as good as the independence of all black people. And they were correct. And Kuma was correct. And I'm, and I'm glad to, to see this new president continue the same thing. And you know why Kuma is still, is still, is still like the, the number one African mother than Nelson Mandela? Nelson Mandela came and, and, and tried to save uh, his own country and forgot about the rest of Africa. It's only Kuma who came and said, you know what? Uh, until, until everybody gets justice, uh, I don't get justice. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so no, but I, I mean, we have to be bigger. We have to believe that the human mind is bigger and, and has more than materialism to worry about. And I think that if we bet to that, we'll be right. And I think the like Republic is realizing that ideas are, are bigger than guns. And that's why they've been shooting themselves for the how many for, they shot themselves September 22nd, they didn't work, they shot 
uh, October 1, it did not work. They've been shooting in Manfi and it's not working, and now people are beginning to, to shoot. But have you ever seen like the public carry body bags of their own soldiers in their territory anywhere before in the history of that, of that, of the other colonial state? Have you ever seen that? You remember that the first time they went and paraded the soldier thing that they'll get, uh, sympathy from their own city. It spooked their citizens because they've never seen that before. They've never seen that before. They've never seen where did their be go there and say come back dead instead of killing people. That spooked them to death. So, so, so what we're doing down there is real power. Nigeria will realize it sooner or later. But we are 8 million and we have a territory. There's a law. There's a history. Nobody can ignore that. Those who ignore it uh, they, they ignore it at their own peril. Because it's only going to grow. It's only going to grow. You hear that the public is almost going bankrupt right now, right? Because the like, public has always been bankrupt. For the past 40 years, its budget has been less than 50% from national resources. The like, Republic is one of the few countries in the world where it had to take the IMF to force the country to report its own economy. And even that, still just a fraction of it is being reported. You know. Yeah, we don't want to be part of that. We don't want to be part of that, and that's why we're fighting. And, and yes, we'll lose lives, but we're losing these lives for them to go. In the past, we're losing lives for them to stay. So, so things have really changed. In the past, we're the ones protecting ourselves. Now they are the ones protecting themselves in our land. That is something. That is something. Credit to the, to the Ambazonian people. Empty-handed, they did that. Isn't that incredible? It is. It is incredible. I agree with that question. But I'll continue with that campaign. I will. I'm. Well, I, you know, I'll take that information. I'm going to pass it around so that we put it in our WhatsApp group. And 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 you know, unfortunately, we we really not that organized politically yet in terms of um, in terms of reaching out to American politicians. And in fact, after this thing happened, I I to be honest with you, I'm almost close to not producing the show on on SCBC because I think that we should we should be focusing more on getting Americans and outsiders rather than talking to each other the, 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 because I think we, 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 we I think we've spoken to each other enough and I think that we should start really focusing on bringing others to, on our, in, into the struggle I know you've been talking about that for quite a while mm -hmm. yeah we, we can do it I completely believe we can do it oh, Mr. Mb, I'm I'm excited uh, we I was talking to um, Amy the other day that, you know, I was semi-depressed because I, I felt like there's nothing I can do, you know, in terms of we tried more than five times to call a meeting to bring people down to strategize on how to engage the American political system, mm -hmm. and it just didn't work. And there are several reasons why it didn't work. People are barely surviving. So, I mean, and there are so many other reasons. And also... You know, politically, we are still growing up. So the fact that this guy is able to put that right there, I mean, it's like, this is what we, we're trying to beg people to come together to do. It's already there. We just need to give that last minute push. It's yes. We, yeah, we have to call. Yeah, we'll we, we make the phone call. But let me say this. Uh, uh -huh. It takes one connection with another important connection. You know what I'm saying? It could just take you meeting a certain congressman or a certain celebrity or somebody who is important and you tell them our story and demonstrate it and they get, the, and if you can communicate to, to them exactly what you feel and understand and they're able to, to feel and understand that pain, man, I tell you what, they will take that thing out there. Don't forget that this South African thing really started and, and, and it, it was really that congressman in California who who stayed with this with with with, with, with the with the thing in Cali uh, in uh, in Congress until it won a majority? So so no. So even if our people are not that active, we just need one person who gets the right connection, and and this thing is over. We just haven't had that one traction yet. If we do, this is because our story is so is such a is such a. It's such a tragic human story that if we are able to take it and put it into, into the hands or the mind of somebody who is important, and that person makes one, two, three moves, this whole thing will come crumbling down.
Because what the French is doing, what the French are doing in Africa, and what they've done to Ambazonia, and you know, in most Francophone Africa, they went there and started doing this when these people were still like natives. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so they don't know any different. You know, Francophones don't understand the difference between uh, there's a there's a voices um, episode where we just basically explain the difference between. Anglophones and Francophones that they think that it's a matter of language. No, it's a whole, it's it's a whole thinking process, a whole a whole system. Pro, it's it's like night and day. Mm -hmm. So they don't understand us. This is these are people who who are controlled by the state. We believe that we control the state. Individualism to us is important. In La Republic, people people think that individuals are not important. The state is, and that's why you see. Whenever somebody has state power behind them, they think they are God now. A small police primary school child, just because they're wearing that uniform, they get respected by everybody because they now represent the state. We went through that. Mm -hmm. You know? So, so no, the French have touched something different. And, and I can tell you one thing. The people of Ambazonia are the specialists in French Africa. Because they are the people who left from freedom and then went and then went and saw what it is not to have freedom. And so we took time and we studied for fifty seven years. We can now really articulate what is wrong because we know we know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Only only the people of Ambazonia has that experience. There's nobody else in Africa that has it. Like the public they don't have it. Algerians when they fought they didn't have it. They've always been a French colony for centuries, I think. So, so we know what freedom is, and then they took us and put us in, in slavery in a colonial empire, and we saw what it is to actually colonize the people. The process of disempowering people, taking away their government, taking away their, their, their economy, then start devaluing them and devaluing them until it reaches a point that people say, enough is enough. And then it shocked a lot of public. Look, we've done something that is huge. And I think it's an amazing story and the world is watching. At some point, people will have to make decisions. We just need to, like Sissiko would say, we just need to stay at it and we'll win. No doubt. Okay. Thank you, brother. Stop yeah, you. I, I, uh, I heard the little girl talking really, really loud, the, the Bayan girl talking really loud. <laughs> <laughs> She's a strong girl. She's not messing around here with me. <laughs> yeah. She she looks at me, she comes, she's like, pick me up. I'm like, wait a second, I'm doing something. She's like, I say, pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> and then she says, if you don't pick me up, nothing else is going to be happening. No conversation, nothing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's laughing. Yeah. Hello to Okula. Come, come here. Come to me. <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> That's a little Amber girl. Don't mess with her. You know what I'm saying? I know. I know. It's a little Amber girl. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, Pa, you take care. Say hello to Amy. Okay, Pa. Thank you. Talk later. All right, <laughs> hey, Amy, hello from Misande. Hello, back. All right. Bye. Bye, Pa. <laughs>